Okay, so in this problem we're told the figure shows two examples of simple harmonic motion labeled A and B. For each, what is A the amplitude, B the frequency, C the period, and D write the equations for both A and B in form of sine or cosine. So uh, they give us this figure here and we're going to be uh, finding a bunch of things and I think it's just easier to hop in. So for A, what we're finding is the amplitude for both waves. So I'll call it A, A, so the amplitude for A and the amplitude for B. Now, what is the amplitude? So the amplitude is essentially the maximum extent of an oscillation. So this whole thing is oscillating, right? So what is the maximum it extends? So essentially what it is, is this distance right here for each of these waves. So basically to its peak or the farthest distance away uh, from the center. So this distance right here for A is 2.5 meters. So its amplitude is 2.5 meters. For B, it is equal to 3.5 meters. Hopefully you can see that. But yeah, so basically just the farthest distance away or the extent it goes is your amplitude. So 3.5 and 2.5 respectively. Next, we're going to find the frequency, I believe. Yeah, so we're going to be finding the frequency now. And so for the frequency, you need to know what it is. Essentially, it's the number of cycles per amount of time. So basically, it's number of cycles per stretch of time. So it can be any time, uh, but you got to count the number of cycles in it. I think the easiest way to do this, so we'll call it FA and FB, is to do uh, just to do one cycle. So basically figure out how much time it takes to do one cycle, right? And then divide it by that amount of time. So for A, one cycle is essentially the time it takes to get back to this point after going up and down. So to go through one cycle, uh, and basically, you can see here, it takes this entire time, which is uh, four seconds. So uh, the time would be four seconds there for A. And then for B, if you looked at it, uh, it's probably easier to do from the top. I guess we could do it here. So notice here is 1.5 seconds. And then to go up and down like this to 3.5, right? So it takes a total of two seconds for an oscillate or for one um, cycle there. So uh, this would be two seconds. So this one is one over four, which is 0.25. The units of frequency are Hertz, which are basically just inverse seconds. And this one is uh, one divided by two is 0.5. So 0.5 Hertz and 0.25 Hertz. Those are your answers for the frequency. Next, we're gonna be finding the period, I believe. Uh, so we denote period with T. So we have T for A and T for B. So the period is essentially how long it takes to complete one cycle. Uh, you can solve for this by doing 1 over the uh, frequency, so 1 over F. So for this one, it would be 1 over 0.25, which is 4, and this one is just measured in time. And then this one would be 1 over 0.5, which is just 2 seconds. So the period is just 1 over the frequency. Basically, just how much time it takes to complete one cycle. So you can see here, one cycle takes 4 seconds, so the period is 4 seconds, uh, and here it took 2 seconds, so... The period is two seconds. So let me just finish writing that. Okay, so for D, we're going to be finding the equations for both A and B in form of sine or cosine. And so we're going to have to decide which one it is uh, based on uh, what type of curve it looks like. So I think the easiest way is just to start with A. So looking at curve A, I can see that it resembles the sine function more because it starts at zero. So we're going to use sine for this one. So the formula you use is x of t equals a sine omega t. So omega is essentially equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Okay, so if we were to plug all the values in, the amplitude for a was 2.5 meters times the sine of omega, right, which was 2 pi over the period. Uh, and then we know the period, right, for a is equal to four seconds, I believe. Yeah, so sorry about that, four seconds. And then we multiply by T, so 2.5 sine of, and this is just pi over two, right? Because this is one half T. So this is your A. Now let's move on to B. So for B, the curve looks more like cosine because I know cosine starts at the top and then goes down, um, but yeah, so. We're going to use cosine for this one, uh, so it's just x of t equals uh, 
a cosine of omega t. So the only thing that changes is your trig function. So the amplitude for this one was 3.5 cosine. Omega is 2 pi over uh, the period, which for b was 2 seconds, so 2. Multiplying it out, 3.5 cosine. 2 over 2 is just 1, so this is just pi t. And uh, yeah, so this is your b. Keep in mind this is x of t. And this is for b. Uh, you could have wrote x of t here. I probably should have done that. Keep in mind this is x of t. Right, x is your basically distance, right, x and then t, so you have both of these there. And uh, yeah, so here are your amplitudes, the distance from basically the top. Uh, frequency is the number of cycles per amount of time, so you basically just do one cycle and how long that takes. Uh, it's measured in hertz. Your period is how long it takes to complete one cycle. And then d, uh, these are both your uh, functions, right? So they wanted you to write the... Um, the equations for both a and b so these are your equations so for b 3.5 cosine of pi t and then for a it's 2.5 sine of pi root 2t uh, but yeah so these are going to go ahead and be your answers and hopefully you found this video useful